Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Sadiq White is headed to Syracuse basketball. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So how are we feeling, everyone? How are we feeling? Five-star forward Sadiq White makes his announcement last night on the On3 Recruits YouTube channel live with Joe Tipton. And like many of us believed, like many of us thought, Sadiq White chose Syracuse basketball to kick off the 2025 recruiting class. Hello, everyone. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we're going over Sadiq White to Syracuse basketball, his strengths, his weaknesses. I'm going to pull up some sound from San Kaiser over at 24-7 High School Hoops when I had him on about five weeks ago when we discussed Sadiq White and his chances of heading to Syracuse and He said it right then and there that they were in a good spot, and sure enough, they landed him, and is Kion Anthony on the way for Syracuse next? Could it happen? Are they a package deal? We'll go over that and so much more here on today's podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right. So, last night, Sadiq White, with his family in Charlotte, announced that he is headed to Syracuse basketball. And I would say that most of us, including myself, are very, very pleased with his decision. Sadiq White is a 24-7 sports, five-star composite player. He is a six-foot-eight forward, top 25 overall in the country. And the number one prospect overall in the state of North Carolina. So poaching players from North Carolina, I see. Even though North Carolina was not in Sadiq White's top seven, his top seven were Syracuse, of course, Alabama, USC, LSU, Texas, Tennessee, and Georgetown, they still suck. So North Carolina was not involved, or at least they probably were involved a little, but they didn't make his top seven, which is kind of surprising. Now, Rivals did predict beforehand that Sadiq White was coming, but I do want to give a quick shout-out and some credit to Sam Stavrakos over on Twitter. Many of you guys probably follow him. He does excellent work breaking down Syracuse analytically, keeping up with the latest trends. Great guy on Twitter, but he did DM me yesterday saying that it was basically a done deal and that Sadiq White was coming. So, quick shout-out to Sam Stavrakos. Thank you so much. So anyways, now getting into the recruitment itself and what Sadiq White said, I never love to take too much out of what players say in a press conference or an announcement because usually they're going to say what you want to hear, right? Like Sadiq White was like, man, when I went to Syracuse, all the love and all the passion that I got from the fans, like, yeah, that's all cool and all. But at the same time, if Sadiq White had committed elsewhere, he would have said the same thing in all likelihood. So... I don't take too much away from everything, but there were some things that stuck out. This was probably the number one. White said that he was looking for a home where he could become a top tier player and where his mom can trust him going. So his mom, by that statement, had a lot of say as to where her son was going to play. Obviously, she felt comfortable with Sadiq White going to Syracuse. You need your parents' approval. There we go. So we got the parents' approval. That's good, right? Syracuse also really pursued Sadiq White hard. And we knew this. He was a priority recruit for Syracuse basketball. But he did mention on the video or on the live stream that Coach Autry and Coach Strawn never missed a game. They were always there. And this was the one thing that I really loved. If there's anything you're going to take away from what he said, It's got to be this. Sadiq White said that the Syracuse coaches would say the things that Sadiq White might not have wanted to hear about his game. They were honest with him. They would tell him what he's good at, 
what he's not good at, what he needs to improve on. Because the reason why this, this sticks out to me is that these players are ultra talented. A player like Sadiq White is top 25 in the country, composite five-star recruit. For most of his life, I think it is a fair assumption that whenever he steps onto a basketball court, he is usually the best player on the floor. And if he's not the best player on the floor, it's because he's playing with other top recruits. So my point being is that a lot of times with a player that's that elite, think about how good you got to be to be top 25 in the country at something. In the United States, when there are nearly 400 million people. Think about how good you got to be. And he's top 25. A lot of times these players can get coddled a little bit. They kept getting told how great they are. And they are great. They are terrific basketball players. Some of them are going to go on to play in the NBA. Some of them are might make a couple all-star teams. And very few, but it will happen, will maybe become basketball Hall of Famers. It can happen. These are the type of players, players that are that elite in high school. And all throughout their lives, they are told how great they are. But Sadiq White says the Syracuse coaches would tell him the things that maybe he wasn't so good at. Hey, Sadiq, you're not good at X, Y, and Z. You need to improve this. That's important because it signals to me that Sadiq White is someone that recognizes what he needs to improve on. So he knows his weaknesses. He knows what he has to do. He's not just focused on what he's good at. He can handle criticism, which is important. You've got to be able to handle the media and people not always being pleased with your play. And obviously that he wants to improve, that he knows he's not a perfect player. He was receptive to the feedback that he was given by the Syracuse coaches. There are a lot of top prospects who might just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I've been told all my lives, I've been, I've, all my life I've been so good. So what, why should I listen to you? But Sadiq White, he listens to the Syracuse coaches. And hey, he built the trust. And now obviously he commits to the Orange. Now, here is what Sam Kaiser over at 24-7 High School Hoops had to say about Sadiq White just about five weeks ago. I think what really stands out with Sadiq is what he can do defensively. I think he's still progressing and developing a little bit on offense, but his defensive tools are all there. He's about 6'7", 6 6'8". 6 uh, he plays you know, probably in college. He's probably going to be more of a four-man um, and that's why his offensive progression uh, is just all the more important. His ability to be able to knock down three pointers offensively. He's already a good inside finisher, but I think you're looking for a little bit more progression uh, from his jump shot. On the defensive end, he's about as good as it gets in the 2025 class. As I said, he's about six seven, six eight. He's a switchable defender. He moves his feet really well on defense. He's a good shot blocker for his size. And more than anything, he plays with a really high motor. He's a really high motor guy, doesn't take possessions off, and competes on both ends of the floor. And I think that's really what stands out about Sadiq White uh, is just how hard he plays on every possession. So that was Sam Kaiser over at 24-7 High School Hoops giving his thoughts on Sadiq White, what his strengths and weaknesses are. My takeaways are pretty simple. Sadiq White plays with a high motor, as he said, and he's one of the best defenders in the class. So that obviously is going to translate pretty well to the next level as a power forward. He's six foot eight right now. Maybe he grows a little bit. He does need to work on his jump shot, apparently, and three point shot. And the numbers back that up. I gave the numbers, I believe, on last poll Friday, I said that Sadiq White is not the greatest three point shooter. So he can definitely improve upon that. But that. Sam also did say this, that if there was any player in the class that Syracuse was targeting that could one day become a five-star recruit, it was Sadiq White. And it's because of his raw upside. Lo and behold, it wasn't that long until 24-7 sports, I'm getting them confused, 24-7 high school hoops, 24-7 sports, named Sadiq White a composite five-star player. So he's already improving. And he's still got over a year until he sets foot on campus and starts playing official games. 
to improve that jump shot, but he's already a high motor player that can play above the rim, has a and, and just needs to work on his jump shot a little bit. Here's one thing that was left out, though, and we didn't know it was confirmed at the time. I wonder how much Vegas influenced this decision. And I don't mean Vegas placing odds on his commitment or anything like that. I mean the Vegas tournament that Syracuse is going to in 2025. I wonder how much of a factor that is for these recruits now. Because if you recall, what the plan is is that every team that's going gets a million dollars in NIL money to be distributed to the players. And if you break it up evenly among 13 scholarships, you're looking at, you know, five figure salaries, essentially high five figures, 80,000, I believe is the exact number, 70, 80,000, whatever it is, it's an obscene amount of money to play in just one tournament, but Syracuse basketball is heading there in 2025. So I wonder how much that is going to play into the rest of the 2025 recruiting class that hopefully follows Sadiq White's lead, as well as the transfer portal and how much that influences it. It certainly can't hurt now that there's more money involved. Hey, this is a fantastic start to Syracuse basketball's recruiting class in 2025. He was the best player that the Orange were targeting. He was the best. And they got him. They spent all that time, all those resources. They didn't miss a game, and they got him. How sweet it is. Big-time recruit for Syracuse basketball now is the next step. And Kyan Anthony, is he coming soon? The NBA Finals are just around the corner, and we know that the Celtics will represent the East and probably the Dallas Mavericks out West. They can close out tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves in Game 5. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip-off. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. My favorite part is I get to see the view from my seat before I buy. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked on Syracuse. I'm Jackson Olzer, and we're going over the Sadiq White commitment to Syracuse basketball last night. And now it's time to get into can Kyan Anthony follow suit and be on the way for Syracuse basketball. So here's what you need to know. Sadiq White's commitment can be a precursor for more recruits to follow. This is a top 25 player in the nation. This is someone that other players can get excited to play with. And one of those players is Kyan Anthony. He reposted Sadiq White's Instagram saying that he was going to Syracuse on his own. He reposted it. He didn't have to. I wouldn't have said it's nothing. I I, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't have cared if he didn't. If Kyan Anthony doesn't repost it, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's a big deal that he did repost it. I think that does signal something. Here's another coincidence here. Joe Tipton, he was the same person that moderated the Sadiq White commitment last night. He recently logged a prediction for Kyan Anthony to go to Syracuse. Coincidence? Coincidence? Why is that? Why is that? On three has it at 90%, basically. It's like 89.9, so we'll round up to 90% for Kyan Anthony to be coming to Syracuse. That's pretty good, right? So White was the first domino to fall. 
He's the first one of the 2025 class. So now, anyone else that comes knows that they won't be alone. They won't be the only player. Sadiq White was first. Now, Kyan Anthony. Come on, man. Now, the thing is, is that when I looked it up, I've done some research on Kyan Anthony on when the timeline is, when he would, when he's expected to make his decision. And obviously, it's up to him when he wants to make it. But he previously stated that he probably won't make a decision until November or early December. That was what came out about a week ago. I wonder if the Sadiq White announcement changes things. I wonder if he already knew that Sadiq White was coming to Syracuse. Either way, I think the fact that Kyan Anthony reposting the commitment on his own Instagram is a positive step and a positive sign that Syracuse basketball is probably going to land Kyan Anthony too, a high-end four-star recruit, one of the standout performers in high school or in the EYBL last week. I think it's a precursor for what's to come here. Syracuse is also in the lead for four-star combo guard Tyler Jackson. There's that as well. When I had Sam Kaiser on five weeks ago, he said, well, it's basically Syracuse to lose. And if anyone's going to steal Tyler Jackson away, it would be Maryland. That's about it. So Kyan Anthony could be next. And then after that, maybe it's Tyler Jackson. And then after that, who knows? What I will say is, is that if they get Sadiq White and they get Kyan Anthony and they get Tyler Jackson, they probably don't need anyone else in the portal. You have a guard in Kyan Anthony, you have a combo guard in Tyler Jackson, and you have a power forward in Sadiq White, who's a great defender and who can rebound. It doesn't appear based on who Syracuse is offering in 2025 that they're going after a center, which means we're probably portal hunting again for a big man next offseason. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's hard to focus on everyone or every position, especially out of high school. And it's better in the transfer portal next year if they can just focus on getting one player. Makes your life easier, makes it so that you only have to develop your resources to one. Looks like we're doing portal hunting for a center. As I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And by the way, I do have a plan to do a podcast on basically everyone that Syracuse basketball is offering in 2025 over the course of the summer. I still need to, I have like a whole list of all possible podcasts I can use, but one of which is to literally do a profile on every single player. So if you want that, comment in the comment section below if you want a profile on every single prospect. I also do want to bring on a a national insider again, like a Sam Kaiser, maybe him again, to go over recruiting. Overall, I think that Adrian Autry has done an outstanding job so far with his recruiting getting Donnie Freeman in 2024 and then holding on to him and then him becoming a five-star player. That's huge. And I want to go back to the fact that I said, holding on to him, you can commit early, but players can always decommit unless they have officially signed, unless they have signed that national letter of intent. You can decommit. It happens all the time. The fact that they got him early last year in Donnie Freeman, and then they held on to him. It's kind of like in Seinfeld, except the opposite, where there was that episode in Seinfeld where Jerry is complaining at the car dealership because he made a reservation for a rental car, and they took the reservation, but they didn't hold the reservation. You got to be able to hold it. So they got Donnie Freeman to commit, And they got him to hold the commitment. And they did the same thing with Elijah Moore. He committed early and they got him to hold that commitment. And with Sadiq White, it's got to be the same thing where, yeah, he commits a little bit early. It's only May 30th at the time of this recording. He did commit on May 29th. He doesn't have to sign for months. 
But now you got to get him to hold on to that commitment. And I'm pretty confident based on Adrian Autry's track record so far with Donnie Freeman and with Elijah Moore that Sadiq White is going to hold on to it. And assuming he does hold on to it, other players are probably going to follow like Kyan Anthony, like Tyler Jackson. And there are plenty of others that they're offering, but we do not have all day. So I'm not going to list every single player. But this is a really good step for Syracuse basketball and getting into that national stage once again, being one of those elite teams in the country that we all want. We all want the glory days. We all want them back and we all have different opinions as to how they get there, but we all want them to get there. And it's certainly possible. And getting a guy like Sadiq White is the start of what hopefully could be one of the best classes in the country one of the best recruiting classes in the country. I believe right now they're already ranked like six just based on getting one player. Basketball is a little bit weird because there's not a lot of players in a recruiting class typically. Only like Duke and Carolina get all the players. It's a positive step in the right direction. I'm pleased. I think we. I think you should be too. Leave your thoughts in the comments below on Sadiq White's commitment to Syracuse basketball, and if you think that Kyan Anthony is on the way as well, feels good. Feels good that Sadiq White is coming. Now, coming up on the podcast, Poll Friday is tomorrow, where I ask the question, who do you prefer next for Syracuse basketball to add? This is for 2024. Sadiq White is 2025, so we're not going to see him this year, but we'll see him the following year. Who would you prefer, August Mahoney, Lucas Taylor, or a third-string center, which I did the poll Friday on. I asked the question on Monday, and then, of course, it comes out that August Mahoney probably won't get that extra year of eligibility. So then, uh uh-oh, I guess we're going to talk about Lucas Taylor or a third-string center. That's going to be the debate, and looking at the voting results, most of you guys preferred Mahoney anyway. So... Oh, well, looks like it's going to be Lucas Taylor or a third string center that is coming next for Syracuse basketball. Man, does it feel good, though, that at least for 2025, we know that Sadiq White is going to be with Syracuse. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and we went over Sadiq White's Commitment to Syracuse basketball, how he announced it last night, and some of the main takeaways from it. Mainly the fact that he's someone who was open to criticism from the Syracuse coaching staff. I believe his exact phrasing was they would tell him things that about his game that he might not have wanted to hear, but are obviously beneficial in improving. It shows that he wants to improve, that he recognizes what he's not so great at, and that he can handle criticism all essential if you want to be a successful basketball player at the college level and perhaps the NBA level one day. It shows that someone who was coddled, or I'm not saying that Sadiq White was coddled, but a lot of these players that are that elite are coddled growing up, told how good they are all the time, and they're not necessarily open to criticism. But Sadiq White appears to be the exception to that. He knows he's not perfect, and he still has plenty of time to improve because he's not coming until 2025. And then we talked about how this move can be a precursor for what's to come in the 2025 recruiting class. Kyan Anthony reposting on his Instagram story, the Kai or not the Kai, the Sadiq White commitment and why that is important. He didn't have to do it. He said he's not going to announce until November or possibly early December of next year. The fact that he did it, is a really good sign that Syracuse already with what appears to be a 90% chance at landing him is probably going to land Kyan Anthony as well. And then there's Tyler Jackson and maybe others will follow those three and how Syracuse basketball probably going to go portal hunting once again for a center next season. Eddie Lampkin doesn't have any more years of eligibility. Naheem McLeod, I believe is out of years of eligibility and William Patterson transferred. So 
They're without a big man for 2025, but they'll go portal hunting for one of those there. So that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you know right away when I'm dropping the next podcast. And leave a comment in the comment section below your thoughts on Sadiq White's commitment to Syracuse basketball. And everyone, have a great rest of your night.